Good afternoon. Let's make a start to the fourth session, which is the final session. And this will be the physical sciences session. Let me now introduce our chairperson for this session, Professor Ratnayaka. Professor R. N. Kapila Taranga Ratnayaka is presently working as a professor in applied statistics at the Faculty of Applied Sciences, Sabaragama University of Sri Lanka. He has obtained his BSc special degree in mathematics and statistics from University of Rohuna, Sri Lanka with a first class honors and has obtained his first master's degree in industrial mathematics from University of Sri Jayavadanapura. In 2011, he was awarded the Chinese government scholarship for his second master's degree in statistics at the Wuhan University of Technology, Wuhan, China. During his master's degree, he received a number of prestigious international awards, including Chinese Scholarship Award for Outstanding Student of the Year, Outstanding Graduate Student of the Year in 2013. Furthermore, he has been nominated again for the Chinese Scholarship for a doctoral de degree in Applied Statistics in 2013. In 2016, he obtained his doctoral degree with number of prestigious international awards for best performances, including the Scientific Achievement Award for his publications. He also won the pres Presidential Award for Outstanding Contributions an Outstanding Graduate Student of the Year for his doctoral degree in 2013 and 2016. In 2020, he was awarded the Most Outstanding Junior Researcher at the 25th anniversary of the Sabaragama University of Sri Lanka. Currently, he is involved in applied research with specific focus on artificial neural network models, multivariate data analysis, and biostatistics. He has published his work in several reputed international journals, such as Journal of pre Systems, Theory and Application, Emerald Insight, Modern Economy, and more research journals. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kindly and descriptive introduction about me. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Organizing Committee, uh, to uh, inviting me again for this uh, session as a chairperson uh, for the 14th uh, annual uh, international uh, research conference KDU. Uh, as a, actually the university, we are really proud of your achievements. Uh, continuing more than 40 years, 14 years uh, is very difficult, but especially you did it continuously so thank you very much again and uh, before starting this session i need to give some uh, introductions uh, small roles uh, for the uh, presenters actually uh, the session is going like this the so uh, you have 15 min minutes but the first 12 minutes for the presentation at uh, 10 minute one uh, time bell will be sounded to uh, indicate that there are two minutes remaining and 12 minutes, uh, 12 minute, uh, two times uh, uh, bell will be sounded to indicate that the time is up. Also, the, the questions and answering session uh, will be started after the last speaker is presented. Okay, so the, after that, I will give my summing up session. Okay, so without taking much time, I will move to uh, first presenter. There was actually the session is actually uh, quite interesting because the session is going like this. So there are five uh, presenters. Uh, two are giving their uh, the presentations related to the sports science. Actually, very interesting because uh, we know the sports means kind of a science. So especially from that two presentations, they are. Uh, explaining how sports science will affect uh, for the sports uh, field in Sri Lanka. Also, one paper from the engineering side and two other papers from the computer and statistical side. Okay, so first, I will move to first presenter, uh, SKIUK uh, Senarat. 
and S. Uh, Sriharan. Their topic is effect of skill program to decision making, comparison between the prohibited uh, substance uh, addicted and non addicted young rugby players in Sri Lanka. Okay, so uh, Senara, so this is time for you. Please start your presentation. Hello everyone, let me ask you a question before we start. Imagine you all are in a plane as passengers, it is just crashed. The plane is going to explode in 10 minutes. In the plane, there are five objects. You are having the chance to get three objects out of the plane. The objects are box of matters, water bottle, warm sweaters, first aid kit and a gun with 20 bullets. What three objects are you going to get? Okay, keep your answers in your mind. Your answers may vary because it belongs to your decision making ability. So, my topic is effects of skill program to decision making, compassion between prohibited substance mentioned as recreational drug addicted and non addicted young rugby players in Sri Lanka. And in Disha Center from Department of Sports Sciences and Physical Education of Faculty of Applied Sciences, Sabirgama University of Sri Lanka. My internal supervisor is Mr. S. Sri Haran, Senior Lecturer at Department of Sports Sciences and Physical Education of Sabirgama University of Sri Lanka. These are the today's presentation of life. Drugs can be defined as chemical substances that change organisms physically and psychologically. People addiction to the drugs depends on many factors. In modern society, most of young generation is abusing drugs without any hesitate. Decision making is a very important in field of sports, especially for athletes. So, Identifying is there any reverse proportional connection between athletes' drug addiction and their decision making ability is a cardinal point to enhance their performances. Moving to the study objectives, the major objective of the study was to identify the effects of skill program to decision making of drug addicted and non addicted young athletes, and the minor objective was to identify the relationship between decision making and drug addiction of both groups. Considering the methodology, this was the flowchart of the methodology process which contained with the pre-data collection, a treatment which means a psychological program and post-data collection. The study designed with the combination of survey and experimental research methods. The study covered of the two main subject areas, sports psychology and drug abuse. The study population mentioned as the young rugby players from age 13 to 19 years in Sri Lanka. The age group 13 to 19 was targeted because it defines the term teenagers. Study samples selected from two districts, Colombo and Kegal, which was named as highest drug addicted number of school students mentioned district and lowest district according to the National Drug Control Board's statistical report 2019. The sampling methods used were judgmental sampling and snowball sampling. There were two questionnaires which provide three stages of research process. Same questionnaire regarding the decision making was dispensed before and after the treatment. The data was analyzed by using the Minitab 17 and Microsoft Office package. The psychological skill program was conducted as the treatment for both districts. Two weeks completed skill training was supervised 
for the study sample covering three practical sessions per week with the supervision of subject related experts including doctors, psychologists and counsellors. The program consisted with brief introduction and activities to improve decision making ability of work groups. These are the hypotheses tested in this research study. Null and alternate hypotheses for identify the effects of psychological skill program and other one for identify the correlation of the major variables, decision making and drug action. Moving to the results and discussion, the data analysis done as a three stage process. The reliability test was done to identify the consistency of the two questionnaire according to the Cronbach's alpha table. It expressed that the values more than 0.7 can be accepted. So both questionnaires had a value more than 0.7 which means the questionnaire's consistency was acceptable. Second step done to identify the descriptive analysis. The study populations, age and the number of students of the both districts. Moving to the statistical analysis, first I analyze the correlation of the drug addiction and decision making. The results interprets that there is a negative correlation with minus 0 0.874 for Colombo district and minus 0 0.772 for Kegal district. For the both districts, the p-value is 0 0.00. The analysis to identify the effects of skill program, the questionnaire was categorized into four subtopics which are affects to a person's decision making. Those are confidence, emotions, characteristics, and assertiveness. Considering about the confidence, it shows that there is a mean difference with minus 0 0.115 of pre-test and the post-test of Columbia district and for the k minus minus 6.579. Both tables indicate that there is the effect of the confidence by the program. Emotions also presents a difference of minus 6.1492 Colombo and minus 7.763 for Kago. This also indicates that there is a difference of mean values. The next variable characteristics also shows that there is a mean difference among pre-data collection and post-data collection with the minus 6.471 for Colombo and minus 8.421 for Kegel. The last subtopic of the questionnaire is about assertiveness. This also shows a mean difference like the previous uh, minus 6.092 for Colombo and minus 10.500 for Kegel. By overviewing all the mean values of the pre-test and the post-test, we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. So, it can be identified there is an effective from the psychological skill program. Moving to the conclusion of the study, it can be concluded that there was a significant negative correlation between drug addiction and decision making which means the addicted athlete shows a low decision making ability and non-addicts having an accurate decision making ability. This can be mentioned as the reverse proportional connection and also can be concluded that there is an effect of the psychological skill program conducted for young rugby players. This study mainly recommends to conduct psychological program to enhance the awareness about drug addiction of the athletes and also psychological programs to enhance the mental well-being. 
it is important to have an ongoing assessment to identify the psychological behaviors of the athletes frequently with related properties and allocating new methods to improve the counseling and treatments to rehabilitate athletes of the rehabilitation centers. This study can be further directed by administering to the other sports also and by concerning about other drugs. Meanwhile, this research only considers about alcohol, cigarettes and cannabis. This can be conducted to the other psychological and physiological effects. Their research short video regarding the program and comments from the experts who supports for this study. <laughs> these are some important references I had referred. It brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Senara and team. Thank you very much for your nice effort for the sports science field, especially with uh, like these uh, research projects, very helpful for the Sri Lankan as well as international sport field to improve their uh, scientific uh, the backgrounds, the scientific uh, research uh, areas, especially in the sports science. Okay, so we will move to next presenter. The, the presenter is M. A. N. Pereira, uh, B. M. M. T. Bandar Naika, K. H. M. S. D. Gunati Deka, M. S. M. S. D. Pemrat Nen, M. A. M. Balasuria. Their topic is analyzing the service performance of uh, sport of a post office in uh, Kurnagla district, a case study. Okay, so Pereira, this is time for you. It's Pereira, I think your mic is muted. Okay, so. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Anand Pereira from Department of Industrial Management, from University of Sri Lanka. And my co-author is B.A.M. Barasuria. The research topic is analyzing the service performance of a post office in Kurnagar district. This is a case study and the paper ID is 133. This is the content of our presentation. Let's have a brief introduction about the study. Talking about the background, the, as you all know, the personal service is a major service of the central government that needs every citizen on a daily basis. As the technology moved to high, high to the sky, the postal services still remain in Sri Lanka as a major, major communication mode between and among traditional communication method. So as, as the business's most su success factor is highly satisfied customer, even in the post office also, the customer satisfaction is significant. So one of the reasons for customer dissatisfaction 
we have identified is that the presenting in for a long time in waiting time, waiting lines and queues. Also, we have experienced in supermarkets and in every other places, we hated and we, we have so much of frustrations of being waited in queue systems. So therefore, uh, the, this study based on the find for influence of process service. So we use this modeling and simulation to apply the regular, regulate the service process and eliminate the complication. Talking about this, what is modeling and simulation? These both concepts absorbed in most engineering applications and social science and scenarios. The essence of this simulation method contribution is capturing the dynamic side of the system and complicated probability relationships. So the study aims to give a reader an instance how simulation and modeling and simulation can be used to enrich the queuing system of this post office in Kurnagar district. So this post office in Kurnagar district have, have two major counters that we have pointed out, that is the post speed post counter and mail post counter. And it was found that in the registered mail counter and the speed post counter, there were a, a, a huge queue and there were so much of waiting lines and it has badly affected for the overall performance of the post office. And the customers who are coming for the post office have also frustrated about the service. So the study object is to minimize customer waiting time in queues and optimize the performance of this post office and, and use this simulation and modeling to give away suggestions, suggestions and suggest more of effective models for this system. So it is considered to describe the modeling and simulation studies by the proposed project when tested with the real. So moving on to the methodology, this is survey design. The target group is the customers who are visit the post office. So the population is infinite and the sample size is we have selected 300 customers. And survey design is, uh, when in the survey design, the data collection method is observation. We have observed the time they have arrived to the system, the time they have arrived to the queue, and the time they have departed from the system. So the sampling method is, is judgmental sampling and the analyzing tool, the software is the Rockwell Arena software. So when in the methodology, we have come up with several assumptions for this study. The first one is the customer attaining each counter with equal probability and availability of identical counters and no work shifts between workers because they are working constant and we have assumed that and no customer leaving the queue until the service is completed from the system. So these are the identified statistical distributions. We have identified these distributions from the collected data and these distributions have used for the in, as inputs to the modeling and simulation method. So uh, we have identified for customer arrival for Q1 and Q2 is the customer arrival rate and the service rate of rate for count one and count two. So uh, this is the conceptual model of the post office. When in customer arrived to the system, they move on to necessary queue for their requirement and start, start the service and moving on to the counter, then departure from the counter. So this is the animated arena model for the existing system in the post office. There you can see there is a huge queue in for both registered mail counter and the speed mail counter. So moving on to the results and discussions, we have suggested three main models for this uh, inefficient system. And there you can see the waiting time in the, and uh, what is this module one? Model one specified, we have doubled the resources in the registered mail counter. And in the module two, we have doubled the resources in the speed mail counter. And in the model three, we have doubled the resources in both speed mail and the uh, registered mail counters. So uh, there you can see, uh, comparing the waiting time with the existing model and the suggested, the proposed models, uh, existing time, existing model, in XT model, the waiting time has been reduced compared to the 
existing system from model one and model three. Now, the in existing model, the waiting time for Q1 is 19.03 minutes, but in the model one, it has reduced to 2.67 minutes. And uh, in model three, it has also reduced to 3.52. But in the model two, it is increased. But in the, uh, when it's comparing the number waiting, it is also specified that the, uh, more than the existing model, the number waiting has also reduced in model one and model two. So uh, percentage of customers served when in uh, the suggested proposed models, the percentage of customer serves have also been increased. So uh, this is the arena software model from proposed model three. There you can see the waiting lines and the queues have been reduced for a comparable and the comparable amount. So uh, let's give some conclusions and recommendations for this study. As the study aimed to develop a modeling and simulation a queuing system, and design an optimized system for the circumstances in this post of the scenario that we have experienced in our day to day life. So, since the other two proposed models have high waiting times and number waiting compared to model three, model three is the best fitted model for the system. This adequate model is displayed lower waiting time and the number waiting in both queues. So, it has decreased the waiting time in Q1 and Q2 to 3.52 and 1.27 minutes, and decrease the number waiting to Q1 and Q2, 4, 6, and 2 respectively. So therefore, this, uh, this is significant, and it is clear that assigning two employees to each counter optimizes the process of the post office. And we have come up with some limitations for this study, including that limited time course to collect only 300 amount of data, we have to limit the sample size. And moreover, the data were collect collected on two work working days and analyzing more data increase will also, and obviously increase the accuracy of the results. So uh, future research focus is, this study can be further developed to measure the feasibility of implementing the proposed model in the post office by uh, allocating two resource people for each counter. These are the, some important references that we have used. And as the acknowledgement, I would like to thank the post office that they have given up their, 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 their permission uh, to collect data and for the reviewers of 14th International Conference for, the insight, for their insightful comments and which greatly helped to improve this, uh, the quality of this paper. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Pereira, for your the presentation. Uh, and I will move to the next one. Uh, the topic is analyzing the service performance of Gampa railway ticket counters by simulation. The case study. The presenter is P. L. Vanyarachi, uh, K. A. R. Kumar, A. MCS Atapattu, AST uh, Atukoral and uh, WMAN uh, Veera Singh, the Vanyarachi also one of the product from the Vyambo University of Sri Lanka. So Vanyarachi, this is time for you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, K. R. Kumar from the Department of Industrial Management, Hawaii Ministry of Sri Lanka. So today uh, I'm going to present about our research project analyzing the service performance of comparative ticket counters 
by simulation. Waiting lines are important in our life. So uh, also the uh, in the transport agents. One year, actually, sorry to so, disturb uh, you. Will you please switch yeah, off your camera? We have studied the uh, Kampa railway station. Uh, please. One year, actually, can you hear me? Could you please switch off your camera? Uh, so, uh, here we have. One year, actually. Can you hear me? Could you please switch off your camera and continue your speech? Hello? Vanyara Chi, are you here? Uh, Dr. Kalpa, I think Vanyarachi is uh, left. Dr. Kalpa, can you hear me? Dr. Kalpa? Yes, sir. I think Vanyarachi has left. Yes, sir. I think he had a technical difficulty. I think we will play his recording now. Okay, it's, it's fine. I'm Asena Ruan okay, uh, from Royal University of Sri Lanka. You can see. Okay, I'm Asena Ruan Kumar from the Royal University of Sri Lanka, representing the Department of Industrial Management. So here our project is the analyzing the service performance of Kampa railway ticket counters by simulation. And I will follow up this content. So let's look at the introduction part. Uh, uh, we know that the uh, uh, queen uh, the waiting lines are a very important part of our day to day life. And when it's come to the uh, transportation system, uh, we know that uh, the railway stations are very important. So, for this uh, research, we have to be a Gampa railway station to look at the uh, queen situation of the ticket counters. And uh, there exist only two service counters to buy tickets toward the single direction. And uh, as the uh, queue discipline, passengers who have been queuing for the longest time are served first, or you can say it as the uh, first thing, first out basis. And uh, in this uh, project, our objective is to identify and enhance the service performance of Gampa railway station ticket counters using the arena. And uh, let's look at the uh, methodology. Uh, total number of passengers who traveled toward the single direction was the population of this study. In the interarrival times and service times required for the study were collected in seconds. And we have obtained 600 sample of data and these data were collected by weekdays, uh, one hour from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. as we consider it as the rush hour. And the word come uh, observed as most of the passengers used the those two counters. Also, we can say most of the passengers travel toward the Colombo port. Uh, using the Gampa railway station. So uh, we basically look at those two counters for our project. And this is the conceptual model for the system. So you can see as I just arrive to the railway station, they select the counter, counter one or counter two. Uh, they take their tickets from whichever the counter they arrive and they to be tickets and exit from the system. And uh, this is the uh, data distribution of our project. Uh, we can say that uh, driver times and service times were entered into the arena input analyzer. 
and uh, identify these distribution patterns and those are considered for the arena model uh, here we can see the distribution for the interval times service rate for counter one service rate for counter two and these data were entered into the simulation and we have developed this uh, computer simulation for the existing system so in here we have used the basic transfers advanced transfers in the uh, arena so here you can see passengers came to the station take the decision of the counter and take a route whether the q1 or q2 and according to the route they get to the station as counter one or counter two and here we can see a process of the counters and when the process is complete they exit from the system uh, when we are uh, considering this uh, system uh, observing, we normally see that the passengers who use the railway station uh, come to the station with a short period of time to the train. Uh, that means uh, short delay in the ticket tissue can result for a few people to miss their train. Uh, investigation revealed that the considerable waiting time and number of customers in the current system is uh, using uh, the counter to issue the tickets for customers will enter this service and uh, in this station there is uh, one closed counter near to these two counters so the uh, railway station can use that counter as a, uh, as a new ticket counter to issue ticket towards the Kalamu port and they can uh, check the service performance of that counter so we what we did in this project is that so we increase one process module same replication length so next uh, can see the uh, of a proposed system so this is the uh, computer simulation model for the proposed system uh, in here uh, we have had one more ticket and decide whether to go to queue, queue length or the availability so that will lead them to a, a counter and according to that they can process the tickets and uh, leave the system so these are the results obtained from the two model and uh, for the proposed system we have uh, took the one which gave the optimal results so in here we can see that uh, number out in the proposed system have increased especially when we see the percentage served in the existing system it's 89 percent in the proposed system it's 96 percent and uh, if we think about the waiting time in the uh, existing system normally a customer wait average time is uh, three to four minutes uh, but when it's come to the proposed system customer has to wait only one minute or less than that even if we consider about the waiting time in the whole system it is less than one minute in the proposed system also the number of waiting times are uh, this compared to the existing system in the public believe you can say that uh, a customer who came to the railway station with a short period of time can take the tickets and get into a train the results indicate that uh, customer within time number of customers so there is opportunity for service improvement in the current system uh, also we have to say that uh, uh, when we doing this project this one not not running the maximum capacity as we collected the data uh, in the last december as it was after a lockdown period then there were you know, school students or not much people so it is not running the maximum capacity so the customers in the system was lower than the actual number but 
uh, there are some rooms for the improvement in this system. Uh, so that leads to a, we can say that uh, in the maximum capacity, uh, definitely this one will be better if the system come up with one more service counter. So in here we can, in the proposed module, uh, we chose run according to the concept, gave better results. And uh, so the station can also use that close counter. <laughs> when it comes to the uh, limitations, we can say that uh, only two counters of the railway station ticket issuing toward the Columbo Fort was studied as a complication of the data collection and observation were collected only on weekdays uh, due to the availability of rush hours in the morning and the model was run for a replication length of one hour considering the period of data collection or considering the rush hour. Uh, so in here, we basically uh, propose the uh, one more ticket counter for the railway station. Uh, other than that, uh, we can consider about upgrading the ticket machines to reduce the time consumption. Uh, moreover, the study can be generalized and collecting data for more hours. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, this Gampa railway station, uh, they can open that closed ticket counter to issue tickets because it will improve the service performance of the railway station and it will give better chance for the passengers to get into train without missing one, uh, like normally passengers who came within a short period of time, uh, most of them came to the railway station by bus, so they can't uh, mainly adjust the time, but if they get the chance for the quick access to the tickets, that will help them to uh, get into the train. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Vanya Arachi, with uh, the signal issues also, you continue the, your session. So thank you very much, and we really uh, appreciate it. Uh, so we will move to the next one. The next presenter is uh, A. Pallegidara, uh, and their team, KV, DSL, uh, Padma Seri, S. Madhuranga, and NR Indika. Uh, this is uh, quite an uh, engineering project. Their topic is design and development of uh, multi-purpose measurement for road, uh, road data uh, collections and analysis. So, so, this is time for you. Um, my name is Sanjeevani Lakshika and I work at Highway Ministry. We are a team with uh, Achala Pallagidara, NIP Ropasingha and Maduranga. Uh, Multi-purpose measuring analyzer is the new product innovation in our team. Um, let's see what are the main objective of this paper with this getting accuracy. Um, and other three objectives, they are uh, move away from the traditional methodology and capture all the data uh, at once allowing us to make the right decision in the shortest amount uh, of time, real storage of data. Let's get start with the question of what is the multipurpose measuring wheel, but exactly uh, the step collection instrument on the road. Uh, basically it is combination of many devices. It has a GPS device, an encoder, a camera with gyroscope, and visual display. We have uh, designed this new product using those devices. However, uh, we have been using variety of measuring wheel in the field, but uh, those can be used only one purpose that we are using proposed methodology to improve new instrument 
because in sri lanka have a lot of road development project example um, rural ministry of rural roads and infrastructure but uh, from which cannot collect data easily and quickly the reason is they have to use a lot of instrument and methods to create complete database then new multi purpose uh, measuring wheel is combined with gps camera and encoder and display however most of the time many officers usually do this manually therefore they had to face a lot of problems um here this uh, diagram of the process of this new wheel this is the main section in the new instrument we have uh, decided to use this method um by using given system uh, architecture and data flow representation this is uh, the measurement wheel is uh, push uh, rotating the encoder rotates uh, giving the real signal it goes through the main processing unit and calculates the lane um, when gyroscope sends a movement uh, it then sends a command to the pan uh, or tilt uh, unit can track that movement by applying the offset uh, rotation to the camera this keep the uh, image on target even with massive shift Uh, in moment uh, up to the rotation limit to the pan um, sim 800l uh, gc gsmo gprs module is a uh, uh, main GS gsm modem uh, which can be integrated into great number of iot projects um, then gps get the exact location and electronic device for storing and processing data Uh, typically in binary from the according to uh, instruction given to it in a variable program that length can be stored in the main device or could and sent to the head office or sub officers this is our new production uh, you can see here Uh, we have already collected data from various places in sri lanka that clearly shows the reason of how data is the uh, variation occurs in different locations uh, for example we have selected kalambo puttalam noareli and badula district uh, and collected data uh please uh, see the video you can get some idea how to use uh, uh this uh, measurement wheel in the field the country's road network is a fundamental aspect of country's development this is also the main way to reach out to market communication education and other opportunities road network is associated with construction supervision and maintenance of roads the most widely used instrument to measure the roads of projects is the measuring wheel a new multi purpose measuring wheel is designed to do different tasks rather than the current single task measuring wheel it is also known as the multi purpose measuring wheel this new device consists of a gps device an encoder a camera with a gyroscope and a display The device has a software which has the ability to collect, display, and analyze data. By using the software of the device, there is a possibility to do the location, construction analysis, and lengths of the roads more quickly. The functions are available in the head-up display unit as well. It lets you measure the Google Map location, date, real time, and the length. This enables to capture, analyze, and share all the data with the relevant officers at the same time of collection of data. The inbuilt camera with image stabilization system sets camera parallel to the ground to eliminate unwanted moves. The new multi-purpose measuring wheel will collect multiple data and make 100% accurate length measurements of a road. Especially, this product can be 
used as a project management tool as well. Having a reliable and up-to-date information system like this will be a great advantage for any infrastructure development project. This is the measurement wheel competitor analyze uh, in the market. Actually, uh, we check different wheel in the market. Therefore, we can see our multipurpose measuring wheel is having a different function, which are not available in the other measuring wheels in the market. Uh, you can see that we have collected GPS points and RTK points. After that, we took the difference between of the GPS point and RTK points. By using GPS, we uh, took the points and length, and then we found it has the error, so we used encoder. Mm. And these measurement fields have a lot of advantages. By uh, this new device, there is a possibility to obtain highly accurate data very quickly. Since this device um, can uh, retrieve and analyze data from several projects at once, making it easier to obtain information through this. Uh, next one, uh, various analysis can be performed as required uh, such as construction analysis. Uh, since the time taken for analysis is minimum, decision can be made very quickly. Um, next one, since all the uh, information are taken and since they are very clear, thus it is possible to plan and take the required future action uh, without, without travel to the particular area. Uh, able to take the maximum usage within minimum time and minimum cost. Uh, then this device could be operated by a single person. And uh, since all the data automatically captured, it reduces labor cost. And it does not require any special training for operating the device since it is uh, operation is very simple. Um, then uh, our conclusion, it can be collected multipurpose measuring wheel, collected multiple data, make uh, accurate length measurements of road and geographical location, and easily analyze using the analyzer module. Um, thus, uh, the current implementation of the PROFOS uh, instrument is ready to deploy for the many phases of the current road development projects in Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you very much for being here by spending your important time with our presentation. Thank you very much, Ms. Patma Siri. So thank you very much for your nice presentation and the nice effort for the innovations. Okay, so we will move to the next one. The, the This one also a little bit related to the sports science field, analysis of selected physiological parameters of an elite male athletes in Sri Lanka. So the present is MKK Pereira and RND Veeraratna. Uh, okay, so Pereira, this is the time for you. So you can start your presentation now. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Share my screen. Okay, so good evening, all of you. So, uh, I am here to present my uh, uh, study regarding the analysis of selected physiological parameters of elite male athletes in Sri Lanka. And uh, we, uh, this uh, research conducted under, under the Department of Sports Science and Physical Education, Faculty of Applied Science, our University of Sri Lanka. So let me introduce, uh, introduce myself. I'm MKK Pereira, and uh, my uh, supervisor and the other uh, research in this study is uh, this LRND, who is the senior lecturer in Department of Sports Science and Physical Education, Faculty of Applied Science, our University of Sri Lanka. So, this is the today content, and let's move to the introduction part. So, uh, uh, what is the triathlon? So, triathlon is a uh, 
sport event and uh, is a very uh, endurance event which consists with three disciplines such as swimming cycling and the running uh, which uh, is three uh, discipline which has to complete by the in the sequential order and the consecutively so <clears throat> uh, in this study i uh, attest or the i study regarding the olympic distance triathlon event uh, that mean uh, the triathlete has to complete uh, have, has to start the event with the swimming course which uh, uh, consists with 1.5 km swimming course after the completing that swimming course he has to move for the uh, cycling course has 4 km covered by cycling after completing the uh, 40 km cycling course he has to move for the running that 10 km running event so completing uh, he has to complete these three courses consecutively he uh, the athlete will not receive any rest period or the any rest days in between these three uh, courses or the three events so i think now you know what is the nature of the triathlon event so let's uh, i would like to Uh, introduce you introduce you regarding the physiological parameters of the triathlon so now according to this nature of event now you can identify how much of physical ex- ex- exertion has to be uh, exerted by the triathlete okay according to the coiling 1995 when i uh, when i searched the literatures i found that there are three major uh, physiological parameters which mainly uh, dealing with the triathlon performance so that uh, anaerobic performance aerobic performance and the gross mechanical efficiency and under that there are several uh, grassroots uh, physiological parameters which have more impact on the triathlon performance so uh, when i uh, when i study about this uh, triathlon so i found this uh, few current issues in the tri- uh, issues regarding triathlon in the sri lanka so most of, most of the time uh, swimmers cyclists and the marathon marathon runners transport to the triathlon so that means there are la- lack of uh, triathletes who started their sport career as a triathlete most of the triathletes in the sri lanka have transferred from the another sport like the swimmers that mean endurance uh, endurance uh, the uh, long distance swimmers cyclists and the marathons and there as well as triathlon is uh, no is not the most popular sport in the sri lanka so there is a lack of technical support and the lack of human resources and the uh, lack of scientific involvement for assessing or the developing their physiological conditions and the sport performance so that uh, based on that uh, we have lack of performance in the uh, at least in the south asian level so based on these current issues i got some questions regarding the triathlon in sri lanka so what is the distribution of selected physiological parameters in elite male triathlete in sri lanka and how they are uh, these physiological parameters uh, related to the performance and uh, i and the uh, in the sri lanka there are some, most of the triathletes uh, came from the another sport or the trans from the another sport so how those uh, another uh, early engage event affect for their triathlon performance based on these research questions i conducted this research for the study with this this uh, major objective and the uh, specific objectives so for the major objective uh, it was the analyze about the selected physiological parameters distribution among the these uh, elite male triathletes in sri lanka and the specific objective was how to uh, what is the relationship between these uh, physio- select, selected physiological parameters and the what in for the effect of early engage event on they are triathlon performance as well as the effect of early engage event on their vo2 max capacity so this is the my flows methodology so i will explain one by one in the uh, next slide so according to the my research the study area was selected physiological parameters based on that i categorized them in four categories four physiological parameter categories like aerobic capacity uh, they, uh, in that capa- in that aerobic capacity category there are uh, to uh, testing part the maximum oxygen consumption which we call the vo2 max and the resting heart rate maximum heart rate and the uh, anaerobic capacity body composition and the biomotor ability these are the four selected physiological parameters categories under that uh, which tested by under that my study so <clears throat> if i move to the study population so i could be able to identify that uh, there are three triathlon pools in sri lanka related to the three courses like sri lanka army triathlon pool navy triathlon pool and the air force triathlon pool so i selected it as the my population there are 55 elite male triathletes so uh, from that population 
I use this sampling criteria for selecting my study sample, sampling inclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria. So these are the, my exclusion and inclusion criteria. From that inclusion and the exclusion criteria, uh, criteria I selected 20 million triathletes from the my study population by study random sampling method. And I take the consent uh, from the every athlete who participated for my study. And uh, Sri Lanka Navy triathlon pool was excluded due to the exclusion criteria. And so I got uh, five male elite athletes from the Navy and the uh, Navy triathlon pool and the 15 elite male triathletes from the Sri Lanka Army triathlon pool. So this is my data collection uh, or the data testing protocol. So I I have to check uh, selected physiological parameters like VO2 max, maximum heart rate, peak power output, body composition, low limb strength, flexibility, speed. So for testing these uh, selected physiological parameters, I select uh, some popular and the uh, current uh, physiological tester, physiological test. So uh, two per 12 minute test and the maximum heart rate calculation formula running based anaerobic spin test, uh, spin test and the BIE analysis running broad jump, the modified shift and reach and the 35 meters sprinting test. These are the my uh, test and the respective physiological parameters. So from that uh, test, so I uh, I use Minitab 17 statistical software to analyze my data and the descriptive statistics and the Pearson correlation test and the ANOVA statistical test used to analyze the data with 95 confidence level. And if I move to the result, so these are the, my demographic data of this study sample. And uh, I already said they were in my study, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and in my study, they have a uh, athlete or the triathlete who start their athlete career as a swimmer, cyclist, and the marathon runner. So there are a few athletes who started the, their sport career as a triathlete. So according to their early engagement, I categorize them into the uh, Four parts. So these are the demographic data regarding according to their early engagement. So <clears throat> this is the descriptive statistic of the my study result. Okay, study. Uh, so according to the aerobic capacity, so we can see these are the mean values of their maximum heart rate, resting heart rate, and the maximum oxygen consumption like VO2 max. And uh, this is the mean values of the, of the descriptive statistic of the peak power output, which is taken by the running based sprinting uh, test. So I got that uh, maximum power, minimum power, and the average power. And uh, according to the uh, body composition, which was uh, tested by the BIE analysis, that means bioelectrical impedance analysis. And these are the testing parameters, and these are the mean values of the BIE analysis. And uh, selected by, according to selected biomode abilities, these are the mean values of cardiorespiratory endurance, speed, elastic strength of the lower limb and the flexibility. So these are the distributive uh, statistics of the my study results. And if I move to the major finding of this uh, this analysis, so I could found the relationship between triathlon performance and their selected physiological parameters. So according to that, they have a significant neg negative correlation with the triathlon performance and key selected physiological parameters because uh, triathlon performance were tested by the incremental short triathlon course. So we will take, uh, we will receive the result as the uh, uh, timing. So according to the timing, these uh, physiological parameters have shown that negative correlation, which means they have a high impact or the positive impact on their triathlon performance. Because uh, it is a reverse, uh, uh, reverse connection with the result and the triathlon performance. So from the, this, uh, these physiological parameters like speed, resting heart rate, body weight, total fat percentage, fat mass, BMI. These physiological parameters have shown that they have a, so they have, uh, they have a, they have a positive relationship with the triathlon performance. So that means uh, they have a corresponding relationship between the, so the corresponding impact on the, uh, the selected physiological parameters on triathlon performance. And uh, maximum heart rate, fat free mass, muscle mass, and the basal metabolic rate. So these physiological parameters uh, did not show any significant correlation due to the p value, which was higher than the my significant level. So they performed that they have no significant relationship between these physiological parameters and the triathlon performance. So this is the next or the uh, another finding of my study that effect of the early engagement on 
Iceland performers. Uh, I, uh, according to the <coughs> their voice comparison, so there was a significant difference between uh, cyclist, cyclist and the swimmers who had the triathlete who started their career as a cyclist and the swimmers and who transport as the triathlete. They have high impact or high uh, significant uh, uh, impact effect on the their triathlon performance rather than the pure triathlete. So, in this uh, illustration, you can all, it can also identify few. And uh, according to the, uh, this analysis, I got as a result that early engaged swimmers and the cyclists have significant effect on the triathlon performance. And uh, <clears throat> for my last specific objective, I study about the, the effect of early engaged event on VO2 mass capacity of the study sample. According to the uh, comparison, and the uh, swimmers, like, the results shown that the swimmers have significant effect on the they are VO2 mass capacity rather than the pure triathlete, marathoners, and the cyclists. So, in here you can also identify it. And uh, in in this uh, analysis, I got that early engaged swimmers, that means the triathlete who have transferred from the swimming, have significant effect on their VO2 max capacity. So, if you move to the discussion. Uh, uh, high training age adaptation on the individual endurance events such as swimming, cycling, and would have more positive impact on the triathlon performance. And I will, uh, I have entered here some uh, references or the some previous studies that conducted by the in the uh, countries that they have shown that that swimming have a uh, high correlated with triathlon performance, which gives some proof for my study result. And as well as the high training age adaptation on individual endurance events such as swimming would have more positive impact on the VO2 max, uh, VO2 max capacity of the study sample. And it also proved by this uh, study which conducted in the 1996 by uh, Gordon. So these are the results of my uh, the major findings of my study. And if I go to the conclusion, the improvement of VO2 mass capacity, equal output, speed, flexibility, and the elastic strength so would have positive impacts on the pattern performance. That means, because uh, in my study, they, uh, these, these parameters have shown the significant relationship between the pattern performance. So, if we manipulate these uh, selected physiological parameters according to this conclusion, we can improve their uh, pattern performance because they have a significant and the correlation with the pattern performance as well as. The triathlon performance of VO2 max was significantly affected by the early uh, type of early engage event on triathlon uh, or uh, early engage event of the triathlete. That means uh, we can take, we, we can uh, receive a good performance from the, the triathlete who transfers from the swimming and the cyclist. That means they have uh, high training age rather than the triathlete. That is the uh, <coughs> that is the we can, uh, reason that we receive this kind of uh, result. So, if we promote the triathlete among, uh, if we uh, promote the triathlon among the, the people who are uh, engaged with the ultra endurance swimming or the uh, cycling event, so we can use them as a uh, training them as a triathlete because uh, this study has shown that they are the early engaged event as a cycling or the swimming have more positive from the triathlon performance as well as the maximum oxygen consumption, that means VO2 max. So this is the my conclusion of my study and uh, here these are the, some references that I used to uh, hear the knowledge gap in my study and so these are the things that I plan to uh, present in the uh, present uh, by this presentation so I would like to uh, conclude my session and thank you for uh, sharing my, your time my presentation thank you so thank you very much Herrera for your presentation. Okay, so next, uh, it could be the agenda, we have to do some session and question and answering session. Okay, I will go one by one. So we have a judge panel also. I will go one by one. Actually, the first one, effects of skill pro program to decision making. The paper ID is uh, ID 26. Actually, the, the present is uh, Senarat, but unfortunately, uh, uh, he, is uh, absent today. So actually what uh, he did, he uh, did some comparison uh, between the prohibited uh, substance, uh, especially addicted and non-addicted groups. They select two groups and they did their 
I study especially in the 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 field of rugby. Uh, they collect data from the the Kagol and uh, Colombo area. Okay, so the second one, I will move the second one. Uh, analyzing the service performance of post office in uh, Kurnagra district, uh, case study, paper ID 133, uh, so, so if you have any doubt, the judge panel and the audience, this is the time for you. I just wanted to know how do you judge the sample collecting time and the dates that you have taken two dates and uh, two specific times. How do you judge it? Uh, yes, madam. We have used this judgmental sampling and uh, we have selected the most peak hours in the post office. And, uh, days, how do you get the days? I, I just understood that it would be the peak hours. Days, how do you yeah. get it? Uh, the day is actually uh, the middle of the day, actually the Tuesday and the Wednesday, and uh, there is uh, it is on critical case sampling that uh, we have we put that in the middle of the week uh, the most of the customers in, uh, will be in the post office. Uh, you are this the, the thing you are the, you made on the assumptions that you made. You have taken the dates. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. Any questions from the judge panel? Actually. There are method, better methods uh, at post offices and the places like that to uh, for, for customers to attend the counter, uh, which are more uh, actually convenient and trouble free. Uh, why didn't you consider uh, them for proposing uh, as a better way out? You, uh, you, you fundamentally think about solving the existing problem. I mean, existing situation. So please uh, uh, think in a fresh way. We have problem congestion, lack of efficiency, and uh, public relations uh, problems, issues, lots of. All those are correct. But uh, the problems we are having uh, are too much at those places, so that probably improving the same may not be the best idea. So there are other ways. Uh, if you work in this line of research and analysis, this thing, uh, search and find uh, the methods uh, which other countries use in a similar context and propose, try to propose, analyze and propose uh, similar, I mean, such uh, models, then it will help the country. I mean, going by common sense rather than data, I don't feel that we can improve the mess we are having right there. <laughs> we have to think of new, something new. Example, for example, when you attend a post office or any counter in some developed countries, first you, there is a meter. You go, press the button and get a ticket. Ticket has a number, right? You go to the counter when your number appears in the display. It is that simple. So people don't, uh, uh, you know, you uh, make troubles to each other in order to reach the counter. So no breach of uh, order of the attendance, nothing. So please, uh, you are the new generation. Please find alternative methods in the world <coughs> and try to study them. Thank you, sir.
Okay, so I totally agree with Dr. Gunekumar's comment. Uh, so I have one suggestion. Can you apply, you know, so here you just uh, use the variable as waiting time, number of uh, waiting in and out. So can you apply OR operational research techniques to analyze like uh, pr the project or oh, maybe graph coloring also fine. So what do you think? It's alternate because here just you use Rockfield Arena 16 software. So do you have any alternative methods to improve your research? Yes, sir. Uh, I can probably add the uh, average resolution time and rather than waiting time and a number waiting and uh, customer uh, service abandoned rate uh, and customer effort scores uh, to improve the study. and try to improve this paper. So thank you very much, uh, Pereira. So the next one, the yeah. page 56, the, the, the present is Vanyarachi. They're analyzing the service performance of Gampa railway ticket counters by simulation, the case study. Actually, this is the uh, kind of similar study with the, the previous one. So any comments? suggestions from the judge panel and the audience, this is time. Any comments? When you have conducted this study? Uh, last December. For the uh, period of one month? No, just yeah. five days. Just five days? Yes. Do you think that uh, it is enough for just doing five days to arrive at uh, uh, a conclusion or a suggestion to uh, this kind of a problem? Do you think that five I think days is it enough? Be better. Sorry, I didn't hear uh, you. No, I think I think it will be better if we could uh, collect more time period. But uh, considering that period and the situation in there, we just limited it to uh, five days. Actually, the Itana Rachi, same comment I need to give for you also. Just take this one as the positive. So, you know, so what happened here, just you consider only few uh, cases, the limited resources. What happened if you want to analyze more counters or the complex situations? So, better to go for, uh, you know, the here, just you use the Arena 16 software. So don't limit it to the software. So better to go to the operational research methods or graph coloring. There are so many techniques, new techniques in the literature. So go try to improve your methodologies with like the updated techniques. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much for your effort. Thank you, sir. Okay, so the next, uh, the presenter, the a Palligam and their team design and development of multi-purpose measurement wheel for raw data collections and analysis. The paper ID is ID uh, 472. So this is the time for the judgment and the audience. So if you have any suggestions, uh, so please, this is the time.
okay uh, so uh, palagadara so actually we really appreciate your effort to introduce like uh, the new innovation for the sri lankan uh, the especially the your, the field what is the could you please explain more briefly what is the novelty of this uh, new instrument uh, comparing with other techniques available methods um and sir uh, i like to uh, introduce my team member mr nalin uh, how to uh, we competitor the market how to the measurement wheel and our new innovated uh, in the market hello mr nalin nalin can you hear okay i think uh, i can uh, answer that question uh, we uh, compare the other measurement wheel in the market uh, normally in sri lanka and our ministry uh, example highways ministry and rural, rural roads ministry we have a normal uh, measurement wheel but uh, we can only get the length um, and uh, we want to the uh, use in uh, some get other details we uh, help to the other officers example uh, to or other members in the field because we cannot get the uh, real um, data uh, we cannot capture um, and sometimes uh, we uh, cannot get the decision uh, without go to the uh, field uh, sometimes we want to create some uh, using gis or remote sensing some maps we cannot uh, get the real data using this measurement wheel so we think uh, we can uh, introduce a new measurement wheel uh, using this um, gis gps and other uh, camera display and something uh, we think uh, we can uh, innovate a new measurement wheel and we try to uh, last we start that project last year uh, in march so we think uh, we can um, do that finally uh, we uh, uh get our uh, um, finally we uh, innovated uh, this measurement wheel okay. you got the, the just this the, the additional question so have you applied for the patents international and local patents uh, sir we uh, last year uh, innovated uh, uh, that what sahasakni uh, mom we uh, introduced that our nani we innovated and uh, we got the second place then uh, we apply the patent uh, through the that uh, sahasakni mon project so oh, thank you very much and the last presented the uh, mkk perera and their team analysis of selected physiological parameters of the elite male tree athlete in sri lanka the pep id is Five zero nine. So, any comments uh, from the judge panel and the audience, please. Good evening. This is Dr. Kihani from uh, KDU. Uh, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. If you don't mind, can you share the um, your results section second slide, please? Yes, ma'am. I think means I can't share the screen. I think I need to get the. Uh, can you tell me your conclusion regarding the body weight? in your correlation analysis uh, the relationship between the body weight and the fat percentage with the performance of triathletes yes miss according to the body weight there, there is a uh, moderate positive correlation and the positive correlation there also according to the body weight and the fat percentage also uh, moderate positive correlation so i get the chance to share this screen 
If it is a positive correlation, you are concluding that increasing body weight and increasing fat percentage increases the performance. So in other terms, can we like expect that the overweight and obese people will perform better in terms of your conclusion? Um, actually, in the obese people, they can't perform triathlon in very well. In the in here, I think I got this uh, result due to their past percentage have a um, positive correlation with the, their triathlon performance. That means uh, if we perform in triathlon performance, that means uh, we are dealing with the timing with the performance. Right? If we reduce in the timing, means we are performing high performance in the triathlon. That means uh, 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 the triathlon performance comparing to the uh, body weight or these uh, physiological parameters. Uh, yes, wait, I will explain. Okay? So, triathlon performance I take as a timing. Okay, so if we reduce the timing, means we are performing high. So, that total percentage also uh, going high means we are reducing our performance. Uh, that means uh, that is the science behind the fat percentage and the triathlon performance. Thank you very much for your answer. But I think this is something that you have to investigate further and just yeah. look back at your analysis and uh, your study uh, sample and just carefully look at it uh, with your supervisor. Okay. Thank you. We also need to add something, especially the Pereira, the, the, the body weight and the BMI. So they are giving same results. So please check the results with your supervisor if you need to go for the further analysis. Please okay. check the results and discuss, discuss with your supervisor. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, the all the members of the uh, group uh, as well as judge panel actually this is a nice effort from the kdu uh, this time most of them are undergraduates but they are i think the research contribution is very high for this area uh, i hope in the future we can see good researchers in the sri lanka uh, especially the research field and see you uh, or uh, uh, again in the next year, the KDU 15th International Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the organizing committee to inviting me for this session. So thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much, sir, for your time and your valuable support towards uh, this final session as chair. We appreciate your help very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of our technical sessions. It's now time to appreciate all our session chairs once again. Professor Prasanna Galhena, Professor Priyani Paranagama, Professor Preeti Udugama, and Professor Kapila Ratnayaka for their very valuable time and contribution towards this basic and applied sciences technical session of this conference. We really appreciate your support. We will deliver all the token of appreciations to you as soon as possible. We will now present the token of appreciations to the panel of judges of the oral presentation session. I cordially invite our basic and applied sciences track chair, Professor Charita Gunasekar on stage to present the tokens to the judges, to Dr. Guna, Dr. Nandana Gunavikrama, to Dr. Kipsri Jayasekaran, and Dr. Hiroshima Vitanage.
Thank you, madam. We will be delivering the other two tokens to Dr. Niroshima and Dr. Kitsiri as soon as possible, who joined with us online. So we will be announcing the best, winner, the best poster presentation winner and the best oral presentation winner in about 10 minutes. So please continue to stay with us and we'll be back very soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Certificate Award Ceremony of Basic and Applied Sciences Session of 14th International Research Conference of General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. Let me announce the name of the winner of the Best Poster Award. The Best Poster Award of Basic and Applied Sciences Session of 14th International Research Conference of General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University goes to paper ID 173 by Ayanti Gunatilaka Kumari Disnaka Abekot and Somasiri. The paper title, Effect of Stocking Density During Brooding Period on Welfare Conditions of Broilers, a Case Study. Congratulations to the winners. Now, the award for best oral presentation of basic and applied sciences session of 14th International Research Conference of General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University goes to paper ID 415 by Kurupu, Sang, Tayanska, Thomas, and Bradshaw. The paper title, Targeting HER2 Positive Breast Cancer Cells by Everybody Labeled Getinifib Loaded Apoferritin Nanoparticles. Congratulations. I cordially invite the session track chair, Professor Charita Gunasekara, to present the certificate to the best presenter. Let us congratulate the best oral presenter of the session. As the best poster presenter is not physically present with us today, I would invite the session coordinator to uh, symbolically receive the best poster uh, certificate. Thank you, Madam. That marks the end of the Basic and Applied Sciences session of 14th International Research Conference of General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. Um, I, uh, just a small announcement to the other uh, participants. Uh, we will ensure that we will deliver your conference packs to the registered participants as soon as the lockdown is over. And now I cordially invite Dr. Kalpa Samarakorn, the uh, coordinator of the session, to deliver the vote of thanks. Professor Charita Ilgunasekara, the president of Basic and Applied Sciences Session, technical session chairs, judges, academics, presenters, ladies and gentlemen. I consider it is my honor and privilege to deliver the vote of thanks at the end of technical session of the basic and applied sciences session of the 14th International Research Conference of Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. On behalf of the coordinators of basic and applied sciences, I would like to express my and our sincere thanks and gratitude for the vice chancellor of Sir John Kotalawa Defense University for his invaluable guidance as all the time. In addition, 
the deputy vice chancellor defense and admin deputy vice chancellor academic for their continuous support advice guidance throughout the conference from the commencement i would like to convey my sincere gratitude for the conference chair dr harind vitanage and his committee have given the guidance and support for taking decisions on time of the irc for being back with us and i would like to express my sincere gratitude for accepting all the plenary session chairs plenary speakers who joined virtually yesterday and the basic and applied sciences plenary session conducted under the holistic growth and national development and was commented by many participants and it was wonderful event and memorable uh, time at the basic and applied sciences session and i also would like to convey my sincere thanks to dr gihani jayavira for organizing the pre conference of animal research beyond publication in parallel to the bs session on 7 september 2021 i think all the research persons participated for the pre conference and i also have thank all the team who have helped and it was really commented and appreciated by the vice chancellor of the kotalawa defense university and i would like to convey my sincere gratitude for all the technical chairs who have accepted our invitation despite their busy schedule and all the judges for post and technical sessions who made the contribution for evaluating and selecting good quality papers for the conference i also try, uh, would like to thank and my appreciation goes to session editorial team who have done the tremendous work for compiling all the papers up to the standard level i wish all the supervisors authors and presenters who have made the contribution for the basic and applied sciences session by submitting their papers being generous helping in submit at the last moment even today keeping their faith with the basic and applied sciences over the many years and that would be the uh, success behind our accomplishment for the annual uh, symposium and i appreciate your effort and i wish you all the best for your future and i would like to thank all the steering committee members of the basic and applied sciences session especially the dean of faculty of applied health sciences department of basic sciences and the kdu kr and their entire effort hard working and dedication for organizing this basic and applied sciences session in addition to that squadron leader noan yalagama and cadet officers for their continuous support and technical matters who arranged and organized time my sincere thank goes to the director of uh, it and his staff for facilitating us all the equipment all the items to help in this technical meet also all the involvement from audio and video team for giving us the support from yesterday onward my special thank and appreciation goes to dr kanchana bandara being the coordinator and done the fantastic job with me and i can't limit the word that her contribution to success uh, on behalf of the basic and applied sciences session and i thank all the staff who helped in numerous way of organizing this event through the time and no matter of either physically present or virtually in back of the picture and i would say that this event would not be success if they are not have been help a hard work and dedication for this event i am so sorry if i forgot to mention any individuals name and every support you made over the we would like to appreciate and letting us to conduct conduct this conference in a professional and meaningful manner thank you all for being with us all the time despite with some technical issues and it was really challenge for us to organize this time fully virtually and 
we wish you all the very best and have a great day and see you in next year thank you very much thank you very much dr samra khan that marked the end of the basic and applied sciences session of 14th international research conference of general sir john kotalawala defense university